So, I turned open my Bible to Habakkuk of all places, and I began to read. I was actually, I accidentally, the Lord knows what he's doing, <laughs> turned it to the end of Habakkuk, and I began to read, and I thought, oh my goodness, this is a now word. So, I'm going to share a portion of this with you guys and relate it to now. And I probably won't even have to because I know you guys are sharp. But as always, I'm going to pray and then I'm going to get into this. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, I thank you so much for this word. I thank you for everything that you are doing. I truly do. And I thank you for each and every person that you bring to my channel I thank you for your protection, your provision, God, and your patience, Lord, especially with me, because I know how stubborn that I can be. <sighs> and so I just thank you for being patient with me, God, and Lord, I just, I ask that you would get a hold of my words today. I ask that you would speak through me, Holy Spirit. I ask God that you would bring those who need to see this today to this channel. And God, I do. I thank you just for helping us, Lord, during this time. And I just want to worship you today with every fiber of my being and with everything that I do. And God, I know that there are areas in my own life where I need to work on. And so I feel like you have challenged me to do that. And I thank you for that. And I, I lift us all up to you, God, that are trying to draw close to you and trying to deal with certain things. I thank you for the grace to do that and the grace to lay certain things down, the, the grace to overcome certain things. And Lord, I just thank you for your wisdom. And I thank you, God, for helping us to extend the same grace that you have shown us to one another. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, so without any further ado, let's get into this word in Habakkuk. Okay. So I will be starting in verse 11 of chapter... Let's see. I've got my physical Bible here. Chapter 3, verse 11. The sun and the moon stood in their places as before Joshua. Because if you remember in the book of Joshua, the Lord caused both the sun and the moon to stand still. It's pretty crazy, but I mean, you know, God has reasons for the things that he does. Okay, so. They went away at the light of your swift arrows. At the radiance and gleam of your glittering spear, in indignation you marched through the earth. In anger you trampled and threshed the nations. You went forth for the salvation of your people, for the salvation and rescue of your anointed. You struck the head from the house of the wicked to lay him open from thigh to neck. With the enemy's own spears, you pierced the head of his hordes. They stormed out to scatter us, rejoicing like those who secretly devour the oppressed. You have trampled on the sea with your horses on the surge of many waters. I heard, and my whole inner self trembled. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay and rottenness entered my bones. And I tremble in my place because I must quietly wait for the day of distress for the people to arise who will invade and attack us. 
Though the fig tree does not blossom and there is no fruit on the vines, though the yield of the olive fails and the fields produce no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold and there are no cattle in the stalls, yet I will choose to rejoice in the Lord. I will choose to shout in exaltation in the victorious God of my salvation. The Lord is my strength, my source of courage, my invincible army. He has made my feet steady and sure like hinds feet and makes me walk forward with spiritual confidence on my high places of challenge and responsibility. Now, that greatly spoke to me. And so I'm going to go back and give you guys what the Lord basically gave me. Is that there's a lot going on right now in the world. And there's more than meets the eye that's going on. What you're being told. Even by truthers is not a completely full picture. None of us have the completely full picture, but the closer that you are in relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ, the more that you are going to know. If you're willing to look. And I dare say, be willing to suspend your own disbelief about certain things. In verse 13, where it's talking about him going forth for the salvation of his people, there is such a move of the Spirit in the earth right now, gathering those who the Lord is calling. In verse 14, where it says, With the enemy's own spears you pierced the head of his hordes. I remember the Lord speaking to me in a dream. I believe it was in 2020. And, well, I saw um, that there were two paths. And this video, I believe, is on my channel still. <laughs> but I saw two paths that people were taking. And... They could go on one path or the other. And it was very obvious. It became very obvious. Those on the evil path began to turn on one another and stab one another. And it got so disturbing that I had to ask the Lord not to let me see any more. In verse 16, where... It talks about my lips quivered at the sound, decay and rottenness entered my bones and I tremble in my place. There has been such a spirit of fear that has been released upon the whole world. And if we let that in, if we entertain that spirit of fear, that's exactly what it does. It allows decay and rottenness to eat us up from the inside out. And it's obvious that with the way that things have gone in the past four years, that it's an invasion. And many of us feel like we're just waiting for this moment of escalation. And then Habakkuk goes on to say in verse 17 that though the fig tree does not bloom, there's no fruit on the vines, the fields produce no food, the flock is cut off from the fold, there's no cattle in the stalls. In other words, I'm not seeing 
what you said, God. I'm not seeing the fruit of my faith. I'm not seeing the promised land yet. I'm not seeing all these prophetic words that you have shared, that you have spoken, come to fruition. But yet, I will choose to rejoice in you because you make my feet to stand in high places so that I am not able to be knocked down from that because of these things. Our faith doesn't grow <laughs> and during times of prosperity. I'm not saying that it can't, but we are forged. Warriors of Christ are forged in the fire. And that is what God has been doing. But he promises to establish us. He promises that he has good plans. And there is coming a day when it is going to be so obvious what God has been doing behind the scenes where all of the prophetic words that were truly from God that have been spoken are going to be so obvious. And I believe that that time is upon us. Or else why would the enemy be fighting us so hard? I want to encourage you guys with these words today. I hope that I said something that blessed you. And as always, I love you. God bless you. And I will see you in the next video.